Let me begin by, because I see a lot of young people, so I get inspired by them. Let me start by saying, what is our world view? Is it that we want to be integrated with the world economy? Do we want to liberalize our trade and participate like other countries are doing? Do we want to attract financial flows? Do we want to adopt technology in this country as the engines of growth for the future? Or do we want to remain insular, inward looking, that anything foreign is anathema for us? They are all here for exploitation. They are here for making you know, use of our resources and getting out of it. So you have to decide that as the fundamental question for the future direction of this country. I have worked on 50 countries in the world and except North Korea and Myanmar, which is now opening up, and Cuba, which are opening up, most of the countries, even in Africa, have decided deliberately that they would gain a great deal by being part of the global economy rather than looking inwards. Yours is a $300 billion economy. The world economy is $30 trillion economy. Just 1% of the market share of even China's export market will bring you as much as $30 billion. Just 1%. That is the strength why China grew. They have a $1.4 billion market size. But they didn't content on that. They have now become the world's largest economy. And that's why they have grown by such a large, you know, I would say unprecedented degree that they were able to bring their country from $100 in 1980 to $10,000 today. That is the story why China has increased. They are now receiving $160 billion of foreign direct investments. They are absorbing the technology by sending the best students to the top universities of the United States in engineering, science, and mathematics. And they come back and they establish those labs and transfer the technology, which is then used in the production process. That is the fundamental question we have to decide. And that's for the younger generation. If you want to remain within your own fields, country, ostracized, oblivious of what is happening in the rest of the world, our future, in my view, is going to be very bleak. We have now been left behind India and Bangladesh. Both were way behind us in 1990. This in Indian rate of growth was 3% and ours was 66% and Bangladesh was not even in counting. And both of them now have per capita incomes which are 80% and 65% higher than Pakistan. These are the choices and these are the options. So we have a fundamental decision to take. It's not going to be taken by politicians. It is not taken by anybody else, by us as a society. It is our responsibility to make that choice. Once you have made that choice, then the direction is very clear. You want to be a Vietnam, or you want to remain Pakistan, which is going back. And that is why we have to transform. We don't have to reform anymore. We have to transform our entire ecosystem in order to encourage integration with the rest of the world. You heard the panelists 
and you heard Mr. Nadeem ul Haq this morning, our difficulty is that we are running a 21st century economy with the arms and ammunitions of the 19th century. We have inherited a colonial system of administration which is totally irrelevant in today's world. That's why the implementation and execution of CPAC, of the foreign direct investment, of the offers from Qatar and Saudi Arabia are not fulfilled. And that is where our capacity is that we are become process-oriented bureaucracy rather than performance-oriented bureaucracy. People say in the civil service, has anybody been taken to task for an act of omission? But they have been taken to task for act of commission. So why do you take decisions? Why do you make any commitments about taking this forward? If that is the mentality, then you are doomed. What is the solution? A young girl's digitization, automation and computerization of all the business processes of the government are the way forward. It will bring transparency, it will bring efficiency, and it will bring accountability. And I give you one simple example which will illustrate the power of automation. The export refunds by FBR were stuck for years altogether. And at every stage, the exporter had to pay under the table in order to get from one table to another. Even to receive the check, they have to pay 3% just to take their check. Three years ago, FBR switched over to a end-to-end -end solution where you upload your claims with supporting documents and through the AI, the documents are processed and if all the documents are in order and your claim is verified, then the amount is transferred automatically to your bank account. There is no interaction between a tax official and the taxpayer. And the refunds were processed and paid in 72 hours. This is the power how the corruption, how the leakages, how the inefficiencies can be removed. But there is a resistance, I can tell you, towards opening up. Just the simple fact that I wanted the websites of the ministries to have all the laws, rules, regulations, because nobody knows what the regulations and what the rules are. And there was nobody prepared to even upload those rules and regulations. Because when you have opacity, you can take discretionary decisions. You can take arbitrary decisions and you won't be held accountable. And that is where the problem lies. So all the panelists pointed out that we are lacking in execution and we're missing the opportunity. The solution, and you are all students of this university whose name is Balistan University of Information Technology. We have to start right from school, science, technology, engineering, creative arts and mathematics, right from the school, and that is the future which will take us there. So thank you very much again for your participation, but it is your decision which direction you want to take this car. Thank you very much, and thanks to the panelists who joined us virtually.